Right, welcome everyone. Sorry, we're for five, five minutes slow, uh, five minutes late, I should say. Um, right, I hope the new arrangement isn't too inconvenient for anyone. I was a little kind of being crushed under the weight of two and a half hours on a Thursday, followed by another two and a half hours on a on, on, on a Friday. As it is, I shall bounce from the Sanskrit at the end of this one to the um, the Golden Buddha Center Pali on the uh, at Turp two. Okay, here we go. Um, we had reached the end of verse 10. And we now go into verse 11. Sorry, uh, Christine, I can see you making hand gestures. Is something amiss? Christine Dowling, that is. Unmute. You're muted, Christine. And you're still muted. Tuam nashrinomi. That means I can't hear you. There ah, we are. Uh -huh. Got ah. it. Got it. Okay. Um, I down as as number ten being next because we looked through nine last week. Sorry, and what? therefore number ten is what I've got lined up. Okay. What what did I just say? Well. I thought you were looking at 11. Ah, okay. Look, um, I'm normally not that dim. I did actually only get my maths O level third go. Num numbers oh. aren't my best thing. I was stronger on the language side. As well. <laughs> okay, you're absolutely right. Me too. Um, it is lesson 10. Sorry, verse 10. Yeah, no, no problem. Okay. Th thank thank you. You, oh, you've read, you've read. Thank you for rescuing us, Christine. <laughs> Otherwise, I might okay. plunge straight into 11. Okay, wonderful. Right. I will shut my mouth. No, well, I'm very glad you opened it. You've rescued everybody <laughs> from skip skipping verse 10. And verse, verse 10 is one of those really hard-hitting ones, and we wouldn't want to miss it. Not for the squeamish, this one. Right. Swapapasmriti. <laughs> God, that, that pierces like an arrow. Swapapasmriti. The memory of the evil you have done. The memory of one's own evil. Swapapasmriti santapta. Shrinvanadan shanarakan. Trasurchara viliptango vihbala. Kinkarishyasi. I'll read it again. Swapapa smriti santapta, shrinvan nadashcha narakan, traso chara viliptango, vivala king parishyasi. The word papa, at the time highlighting here, often translated as sin. Um, in fact, in, in modern Hindi, um, if, you, if you, somebody is doing something that somebody else doesn't like, you know, the way of saying it's a wrong thing to do, I don't like that, is in Hindi, that is a big sin. The pap, often translated as, as a sin. However, it's more, it, it, well, it, it, yes, but it also means an, an evil. Often it means a misfortune. But uh, a pap, a misfortune has uh, be, be befallen you. But the essential meaning um, it involves a moral calamity, one with a moral tone, a moral evil. So remembering your own papa, the prefix swa means one's own, of oneself. So swa papa means the papa, the evil. The swapapa, one's own evil, that is the evil done by oneself. Swapapa smriti. Smriti is memory. I'm just going to switch over to iPad page. There we are. So, um, 
can you all see the can you all see the iPad screen? Okay, thank you. The root smri means to remember. And as in the case of many, many verb roots making nouns, you can make a verbal noun by adding t at the end of it. One example that we have, for example, from the root bud, bud plus t becomes buddhi. Smri makes smriti. The basic meaning of that word is simply remembering. We all, I'm sure most of us anyway, know it in its Pali form of sati, which is usually translated as mindfulness. So the satipatthana sutta and so on, sati, mindfulness. But that, all that means, it's simply the, the Palified version, the Pali version of the, the ordinary word meaning re, re, remembering. So swapapa smriti, own evil remembering, is remembering, by the remembering of one's own evil. There we are, get out of this. Santapta. Now the root tap, means heat. That's the basic meaning of that root, is heat. And in fact, we see it in, in its Latin form. It's, it's coming in, into modern English as well as um, tepid, meaning warm. And in Russian, tiop, tiopli means hot. So tep meaning, meaning heat. And by extension, it can mean as it were, turning the heat on yourself. It's the, the practices of austerity. And it's one of, this is one of those numerous roots that can make one of its, one way of making a verbal noun is by adding as. Sorry, sorry. I, f I forgot to share my iPad screen. It's a tap, tepid. Hmm? And it makes... <laughs> Tapas, often translated as you know, austerities. In fact, the um, steering group of the, the steering committee of the Totnes Meditation Group meets in a little restaurant in Totnes, appropriately named Ben's Tapas. That's the other form of tapas, those rather nice Spanish delicacies, you see. As it was rather appropriate that to discuss meditation group, you see, with the discussing tapas meet in the tapas spa. <laughs> so tapas literally means heat and then auster austerities. If you are santapta, by the way, tapas just past possible in the normal way makes tapta. So if you're santapta, like burnt up, or consumed, consumed by fire. So the santapta here, your swapapa smriti santapta, like consumed by the fire, not just burnt, but tapta would mean burnt. Santapta, burnt up, consumed. Swapapa smriti santapta, own evil memory consumed. So in other words, you are consumed in the fire of the memory of the, the evil that you have done. That's swapapa smriti santapta. The swapapa smriti santapta. This ending aha here is the um, masculine nominative singular. Santapta. Shrinvanadasya narakan. Shrinvan, the present participle, hearing, and hearing the hellish cries. The, so go on 
to, and we are again, root shru. It's a, a ninth class verb. We'll come to that. Those of you who stick with me through Thomas Egginus will we'll, we'll come, come, come to that. But it just uh, shru. Um, it makes. Why does it go from shru to shrinote? Don't worry, all will become clear as we go through the through the grammar classes. But it makes the present participle shrinvan. This means hearing. So hearing or listening to. Nadashanarakan. Oh, by the way, um, shru to hear makes its past participle regularly. Shruta, neuter form shrutam. And there, of course, we get many of the sutras, the Pali suttas, beginning in Sanskrit, evam maya shrutam. Literally, thus by me heard, translated as thus have I heard. And in Pali, of course, evam maya suttam. So shrutam in Sanskrit and suttam in Pali. So shrinvan, hearing, it's the present participle because it describes what a person is doing as something else is happening. So shrinvan, nadashya narakan. And the root nad means to, to roar, or to cry, or to howl. Incidentally, a lot of you may know the word nadi, meaning a river. Because the river is, well, if it's in flood or in spate, it's the, the roarer, the thing that roars along, the nadi, the river. So nada is the verbal noun. It means a cry or a roar. We have the, um, the singhanada, the lion's roar. Singha nada, the lion roar. By the way, we also have um, the word for city is Pura. So Singapura, literally the lion city. In English, we know it as Singapore. So the Singapura, Singapore, the lion city. So Nada is a masculine noun. And so the accusative plural is nadan, nada nadan. So shrinvan nadan, hearing the cries or hearing the, the, the shrieks. What cries? Because that's the accusative plural, nadan. Shrinvan nadascha narakan. Right. Naraka. Sorry. Naraka just means a hell. And like many, many nouns, it can make an adjective simply by strengthening the first syllable. So Naraka, hell. Naraka, hellish. Incidentally, we'll be encountering this method of forming adjectives quite a lot. And one very common one, which I think occurs in a couple of verses time. Remember it well now. There's um, manushya, a common word, very common. Manushya means a human, a human being, manushya. And it's a noun. And in exactly the same way, you make an adjective out of it by strengthening that first, um, the first syllable, the first vowel, the vowel of the first syllable, manusha. It talks about the, the manusha nava, the, the human boat, that is you know, the boat of human life. So, 
nada narakan nada nadan narakan shrinvan so in ordinary prose it would be hearing hellish cries shrinvan narakan nadan here we say nadanscha Let me just take you back here. You will notice that Nadan has become Nadanscha. In fact, I'm going to change this to Nadan in the analysis. When you get to, um, just to explain it briefly, we'll come to it in more detail in the, in the Agonus lessons, where you get a word ending in an N followed by a Ch or a T. Um, you, you you stick in an extra s at the end, so it's not nadancha, but nadascha. That's just a feature of sandhi. Don't um, let it de detain you now. It's just a, a grammatical a, a sandhi rule that we'll we'll learn as we go, go, go along. It doesn't um, have any effect on the meaning. So for shrinvan and the ch means, of course, and so shrinvan nadascha narakan and hearing the hellish cries. It could also have been said, Shrinvan Cha Narakan Nadan. The word order is quite fluid in poetry. In, in ordinary prose, it would have read Shrinvan Cha Narakan Nadan. In poetry, you can change it to Shrinvan Nadan Cha Narakan. It's the same, same meaning. So, consumed with the, the memory of the evil that you have done. And hearing the hellish screams. That's the screams of people who've, uh, who've gone to where Shantideva is telling you you're going to be very soon. So, let me get back to Okay, anyone who's a bit squeamish about these things, you can kind of um, log out for the next 10 or 15 minutes. However, that will rather destroy the point that Shantideva wants to make. He wants to confront you with the real horror of the situation that you are either in or are deluded if you don't realize you're going to be in it very soon. Unless you mend your ways. That, this, this is the bad news he's giving here. The good news is there is a way out, which is his purpose of writing the entire Bodhi uh, Chari Avatara. Hopefully, I will live long enough. Hopefully, we'll all live long enough for us to get to the end of the Bodhicherry Avatara <laughs> in these lessons. Failing that, just get hold of a translation quickly. So, the Anga. Anga means a limb, as in you know, the arms and the legs. And by extension, it means a constituent part of something. Um, for example, the Hatha Yogis among you will be familiar with um, Ashtanga Yoga. So Ashtanga Yoga, and that Ashtanga merge, merges by sentence the Ashtanga Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, literally the eight limb yoga, the yoga consisting of eight sections. And we have the um, another for Buddhists, even more famous eight limbed thing is the noble eightfold path. So when we say eightfold in Pali, you say eight limbs, so the Atangika Magga, the Ashtanga in Pali. The Atangika Magga. Atta 
Unga, Ta Angika, the eight limbed path, the noble eight eightfold path. So there we have Anga meaning a limb or a constituent part. Lip is a root, a verbal root meaning to, to anoint. If you can anoint somebody with, um, with oil, anointing their limbs with oil um, is that root lip. But here is a less pleasant kind of anointing. You can strengthen it, give it a sign of intensive meaning by vilip. That prefix vi often means apart or separated, but it sometimes has an intensive meaning. So vilip, so vilipta, smeared all over. If you are viliptanga, You are literally smeared limbed. Right? And, and again, vilipta anga becomes viliptanga. So you viliptanga, what with? Trasuchara. Now, the root ordinary char means to go. Charati. Charya is a Charya is one way of making a verbal noun from char. So the bodhi charya, avatar, the bodhi charya, way of proceeding, way of, of be be behaving. So the bodhi charya avatara is that same char. And for those of you who think that this um, root char looks a bit like the English word car, it is not a coincidence because that's exactly what it is. Because a char, to go or to convey or to carry, also means to carry. Carriage, carry, car, char, it's all from that same, same root, either of going or going with a burden, namely carrying it. So ut means out, up or out. We can make a verbal noun, utchara, that which grows out, that which comes out, that which emerges. And the a T followed by a ch becomes by santi utchara. So utchara has exactly the same meaning as we have in Latin excrementum, excrement, that which grows out, that which emerges out of you. So, it poo, right? So, trasa, from the root tras, to fear, trust the verb to fear, trasa, it's more terror, sh quivering terror, just ordinary baya is the regular word for fear. Trasa is more the terror, so trasa uchara, literally terror shit. You've shit yourself in terror. It's the trasa uchara. I say, not for that, he doesn't pull his punctures. Trasa uchara viliptango. You're limbed or smeared all over you. Shit yourself in terror, smeared all over you. Just to wake you up a bit nudge you out of your complacency that everything's lovely. The traso chara biliptango vivala vivala um let's get back to where we were Ooh. Ooh. sorry I can't be oh here we are no we aren't I'm trying to move this page and get back to my Come on, please let me get back to my page. It was being cooperative a minute ago. Trasuchar viliptango vihivala. 
is a general word meaning vihvala. I just don't know what to do. do, do, do I'm so terrified or kind of, you know, caught so unprepared, you just don't know what to do. In like in 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 dismayed terror. Um, no, distra- distress there. The, the, uh, it's a rather tame word for it. King Karishasi. Let's get back to. Oh, sorry. Screen mirroring. Come on. Sorry, this techno bit's not quite as smooth as I hoped. There we are. There we are. King Karishyasi. Utkra. To do. The future tense is very often made with the insertion of the shia or isya or isya. So karishyati, he will do. King karishyasi, king karishyasi, what will you do? Kim just meaning what? King karishyasi, what will you do? So. I'll read this through again, and then if there are any any queries on it, I'll be happy to happy to take them. Swapapa, swapapa smriti. Sorry, let me go back to. Before I could just drag it down, and it would leave the screen and leave the other one behind it. But it's not doing it for me. Swapapa smriti santapta shrinvanna dashcha narakan trasurchara viliptango vihbala kinkarishyasi. And once more, Swapapa smriti santapta shrinvanna dashcha narakan trasurchara viliptango vihbala. Right, do we have any queries arising out of um, of this verse? Mariano, Mariano waves his hand. Hi, can you hear me? I can indeed. Wonderful. Just... Um... One is a remark, you know, the Nada. There is a meditation in uh, the Forest Sangha, which is on uh, the sound of silence. And that is a nice one. Because the way you put it, it it is a stream. It is a roaring stream. And if you really listen to the sound of silence, it is not silent at all. Indeed. Maybe internal sounds or whatever. The other one was around the anger. Mm Mm-hmm. If I do, I remember correctly that it is also angul, like uh, you know limbs. Oh, anguli! Anguli is a f- f- finger. Finger. So there's an ang- angulimala. Angulimala. Is it around the joint? Because this one is always an angle, even if it is uh, 180 degrees, but can easily become an angle. Same with the leg. And I was wondering whether there is any. Association there. Um, I am not quite sure. We can. I can actually. Why don't we just check it immediately? That's the anger. Yeah. Meaning a limb, the body, but anguli. Angul. Hang on, get the. By the way, if you don't have this. Um, Mooney Williams online Sanskrit English dictionary. I recommend that you have it. 
unguli. Finger, thumb, or the great toe. Mostly it's the finger. Unguli. Maybe it's, maybe it's just the diminutive of unga. It could be as a diminutive form. Mm. Um, but it, as far as I know, it only, unguli only means the finger. And um, many of you may be familiar with that delightful character, Angulimala, um, who was told by his guru that his, the, the gift, the payment to the guru was to bring him back a hundred fingers. And he got 99 of them. And in fact, he wore them in a, in a mala, which is a, a garland around his neck. So he's the Angulimala, the finger garland. And the, the hundredth, fig, hundredth finger was actually going to be none other than the Buddha. But um, the Buddha had a certain way of persuading him to change his mind, which is from, from, from that moment to the great benefit of mankind. Angulimala was, was um, dissuaded from getting his hundredth finger from the, from, from, from the Buddha. That's the Ang Angulimala. So you're right, Mariano. It, it could well come from that same word, and it looks to me that the Muni Williams doesn't give it as such, as, uh, as possibly just as a diminutive. The, the Angani would be the big limbs, and the ang Anguli is the, the, the little limb, the, the limblet. Thank you. Right. Right. If there are any queries, arising out of that, I'll take them. Otherwise, we can go on to, uh, to verse 11. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can now. I'm just wondering whether vilify, you know, to vilify, to smear someone, you know, with insults and so on, whether it was related to that or not. Um, I, it's a lovely idea. My first reaction is no, because no, we no, have, no, hang on, I'm just going to, because the root here is lip um, with the prefix vi, whereas the from vilify, this is saying like vilus or whatever it is in Latin, which I very much, I can't see um, a connection. I think it's just a coincidence that we've got this, that the via, the vil, but coming from diff different sources. Hmm. Um, Nice idea there. I'll I'll check it out just in case I'm wrong and let, let, let you know next time. I wonder whether it is related to lipidy uh, fat, you know. Oh yes, the lipids, yeah, because you would sm smear with fat and smear with oil. Yes, and the fat is the kind of smeary bit. Mm. Yeah, nice idea, um, Mariano. Let me check that one as well for next time. The lipids. Right. Are we ready to proceed? On the basis of silence being consent. Oh, Aiden, um, you've, you're, you've gone upside down. Good, you're the right right way up again now. That's great. <laughs> Let's enlarge it. Jiva Matsya Ivasmiti Yuktam Bahyame Haivate Kimpuna Krita Papasya Tivran Naraka Dhukata. And again, Jiva Matsya Ivasmiti. Yuktam bahayam, sorry, yuktam bahayam ehaivate. Kimpuna krita papasya tivran narakadukata. The jiva, it's um, a noun meaning life. Also in Hindu philosophy, the jiva 
is used to mean the, the individual soul as opposed to the paramatma, the jiva, as, the, as it were, the individual soul, that which gives you life, the jiva, that which is alive in you. So it's both a noun and an adjective. So jiva matsya, a live fish. And iva, jiva matsya iva. That's um, an enclitic meaning like, similar to. So jiva matsya iva, like a live fish. The meaning in here is like a fish that has been caught alive. I mean, it's on the hook or in the net. It's been caught and it's helpless and it's flapping about. Vivala, dismayed, distressed, not knowing what to do. Jiva matsya iva smiti. So asmi means I am. Iti means thus. So jiva matsya iva asmiti. I am like a live fish or a captive, a fish caught alive. I am like a live fish. Iti. Thus thinking, yuktam bhayam iha eva te. So iha eva becomes by santi ehaiva. So basically, Shanti Dev is saying, if in those, if in these circumstances now you feel absolutely terrified. You have every right to be. You are right to be terrified. So he describes the terror and said, yeah, yuk bayam, yuk, yuktam bayam. Terror is exactly the right thing you ought to be feeling. You've got that right. Bayam. Um, now try and get my, I'm just going to try and get my, Root B, noun, neuter noun, bayam. Bayam means fear. It also means a danger, in, as, as in that by something you ought to be afraid of, bayam, both a fear and, and a danger. Um, incidentally, it is cognate with our English word fear. Um, and the, the four root, as in phobia. So bayam, fear, phobia, they're all from that same root. It's fear. And, you know, and in a way, Italian paura, um, Latin pavor, meaning, meaning fear. The so bayam, a neuter noun, what's he saying about the bayam? It's Yuktam. Okay, I think I've found a way, better way of doing it now, without risking inappropriate language being used when it doesn't work. So where are we? Yuktam bayam. Yukta. You know, it's this our well-known root yuj, meaning to join. What the verbal noun is yoga. The Latin jungere, from which our English join, Italian jungere, English join via the French joindre. So joined, yuktamle is literally joined, but it also has the meaning of appropriate. In other words, the, the underlying idea is it joins up properly. It's the right thing there. It joins in. It's appropriate. So yuktam bayam. Your bayam, your fear is yuktam. Yeah, the right thing. It's appropriate in the right place. You are, you are rightly afraid. Yuktam bhayam ehaivate. Here we are. So, by the way, the this is a past participle. 
So yujta becomes by Santi yukta. Yukta, by the way, of course, directly cognate with our English word like yoked, meaning joined. Yuktam bahyam ihaibate iha means here, ordinary word meaning here, and also then means in this circumstance, in the circumstances in which you are right now. So, and plus the emphatic particle eva. So, iha plus eva by santi becomes ihaiva. Ihaiva means not just here, but yet right here, exactly where you are now. Not something that's going to happen later, something that might happen to something else, somebody else. Ihaiva, right here and now for you. So, and te is for, for you. English, the is ihaiva, yuktante, it's fitting for you. Yuktam bhayam ihaivate. The bhayam is. Oh, goodness me. Um, I need to get my coffee. Thank you very much, Odin. I, I thought I'd run out of time. I haven't. I've still got my coffee, though. Thank you. Bit cool now, never mind. Odin, Odin is looking after me. Thank you, Odin. <laughs> so the bhayam. Yuktam, fear is appropriate for you. Te, ihaiva, right here and now. So, even just thinking about these things, it's right for you to be afraid. And then, kimpuna. Kimpuna, literally, what again? It's just a, a, it's, um, an idiomatic phrase, kimpuna, means all the more so, how much more so. So, kimpuna, kritapas, kritapapasya, tivran daraka, sorry, tivran daraka, dukata. Yuk, bayam yuktan te, fear is appropriate for you. Kimpuna, literally, what again, meaning all the more so. Kritapapasya. Again, uh, and the root crit to do. Krita. Past participle done. Krita, no. Krita papa, literally done, done evil, is a compound adjective meaning a person by whom evil has been done. And you'll see in this text that it is in the Genitive form, kritapapasya, the asya being the genitive ending. That's because this te here is a short form genitive. If you somebody, if something is yukta appropriate for you, it's followed by a genitive. So yuktam te appropriate for you. Te is a short form genitive. So and how much more kimpuna is it appropriate? Kritapapasya for somebody who has done evil. Meaning then now, fear is appropriate for you. How much more so is fear of the sharp pains of hell appropriate for a kritapapasya, the one who has done evil? So it's a slightly complex construction there, but if you analyze it, just remember, Yuktam bhayam ehaivate. Appropriate is fear right here for you. Te in the genitive. Kimpuna, how much more so is it appropriate 
for you who have done evil, to be afraid of the Tivran Merkaduchata, of the, you know, the intense pains of hell. I remember Jesuits talking to me about this kind of thing years and years ago. There we are. <laughs> so, Tivra Narakadukata. Sorry, just get to the Tivra. Meaning intense or sharp, but I always, it always, if not always, then certainly mostly in connection with unpleasant sensations, the tivra. So you often find the um, tivra dukkha, you know, sharp dukkha, often used in this sense in a, in a physical way, in a sharp pain. Incidentally, for the Pali students, it becomes. Just the same interpali tibbadukkha. So here we have tivran naraka dukkata. This is a form of the, an old form of the ablative. Um, this ending ta. It's an old Vedic form of the ablative. Normally the ablative of the art declension is an art. Sorry, just trying to move the page. Okay. So fear of sharp pain would be bhayam tivrat dukkat. It's the normal ablative forms. By Santi, this would become, you could either join them into a compound, Tivra, Tivra Dukkat, or Tivra Dukkat. So this T would become a D before the following. Now, here you see Tivra Narakadukkata. It's exactly the same art, but the T becomes an N before a following N. That's all that happens. It's the word Tivrat, but Tivran So Tivrat Naraka remains remember becomes Tivran Naraka. And this, the normal ablative ending, uh, because you're afraid of something in Sanskrit and Pali, you're afraid from something, you use the ablative. And this ta ending is an alternative ablative ending. It's much less used. So you are afraid of the sharp hell pain. So how much more so is it appropriate for you to be terrified You, Kritapapasya, you, you miscreant, you, you have done evil. It's appropriate, even Kimpuna, even more appropriate for you who have done evil. Te Kritapapasya, this Bayam, Tivrat Narakaduhka, to Tivran Narakaduhka Kata. So before you are taken down into hell. The previous line, you got off with it quite lightly in verse 10. You're just lying there smeared in poo. This time now, you even be even more terrified just imagining yourself descending into the tivra dukkani, the, 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 the sharp pains, the bitter pains of, of hell. God, I was almost like say, in the name of the Father. No, no, I, I, I bet not. Go, 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 go there. <laughs> it's an Irish Catholic childhood coming out here. 
Um, so Tivranarika Dukata. I just want to go back here to this iti. Jiva Matsya Ivasmiti. This um, word iti essentially means thus. Its most common use is like end quote. So the, the Buddha is recorded as saying something, anybody is recorded as saying something, and the iti just means close quote, followed by he said. It can mean more than that. It very often does mean more than that. As an extension of that meaning, it's not just a close quote. It gives the reason for something. Um, I think I may have given the example last time that the, if the child is afraid to go up to his bedroom because he thinks there's a ghost there, hmm? you put that in Sanskrit by saying, there is a ghost in my bedroom, iti, the child refused to go in there. So the iti is like, quote, but also a reason. Hmm? And it's often out of a desire to do something. He, he, he worked hard because he wanted to be successful. In Sanskrit, you'd say he wanted to be successful. Iti, he worked hard. In other words, it's not just a quote, but it, it explains the reason for the following action. So, jiva matsya ivasmiti. You know, because you are exactly like a, a captured fish, it is appropriate for you to be afraid. By the way, the as meaning to, to throw, uh, sorry, means to be and to throw. Um, as It forms as me, I am, um, and asti, meaning is. And it's exactly cognate in, in, in German. It's ist. In Latin, of course, it's est. English just dro drops the T, comes is. And in English, I mean, it's almost the same in English as in Sanskrit for am. We just in English, we drop out both the S and the I. So we're just left with the word am. So when we use the word am, um, it's the same as the Sanskrit asmi. And you know, in, in Italian, sorry, in, in Latin, sum, meaning I, I am. Um, from essay. So it's that you've, you've in most of the Indo-European languages, you're going to find there's either an S and an M there or just an M. Um, the Italians spoilt it. They changed it to sono. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Actually, the Spaniards spoilt it even more with soy. We we'll let that go. Let that go, go. Go for the moment. They're, they're our outliers. So, jiva matsya, jiva matsya ivasmiti, fearing that I am. Sorry, thank you. I forgot. Forgot again. Should have told me earlier. This, this is what I was trying to say. As root as as me I am, and so on. These are all the things I've just 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 been explaining. Um, so I'll just read this through once more, and um, then I'll, I'll take any questions on it. Jiva matsya ivasmiti yuktam bhayam ihaivate 
किं पुनः कृत पापस्य तीव्रान नरक दुखता and once more let me get you my text back jeeva matsya ivasmiti yuktam bhayame haivate kim punah krita papasya jeevran naraka dukhata right any questions arising out of this one while you're thinking of questions i'm just going to um torment bob for a moment Are you ready to be tormented bob <laughs> okay <laughs> okay hopefully it'll be it'll be in a good good cause um it's back to where we were looking last week at shas and shas shas is a root meaning to cut and shas is to teach and we've got this um ending tra which means either a physical tool for doing something or just a means of doing something so a shastra is a cutting tool a thing that cuts but specifically sorry 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 odin thanks for reminding me odin here we are shas cut shas teach so a shastra a cutter a cutting tool um in fact it means generally means a weapon and the shastras are the particular forms of scriptures the shastra and they're often used in conjunction so you say young man will you make your living by the scripture or the sword in other words will you make your living you know living as a holy and a learned man or as a military man or even as a, a man of violence so are you then able to um bob give us with your most perfect non jordi accent the difference then in shastra and shastra 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 perfect you see that was ab- absolutely perfect and now i'm moving to tunbridge wells by the way james after this Oh in Tunbridge Wells okay where well, you can't get more southeastern than than that okay pop pop southeastern tunbridge wells <laughs> so <laughs> now shastrena va shastra to shastrena shastrena va Now can you say in Sanskrit by the sword or by the scripture shastrena va shastrena va shastrena va shastrena va you couldn't have done it better if you'd been a genuine native of tunbridge wells bob okay thanks <laughs> <laughs> um just one thing we times nearly up i'm going to have to disappear kind of more or less on on the minute this time i've got about 5 minutes this root tra and swa this is a little rabbit hole here tan means to stretch and it's come 
into our modern languages with slight variations of pretty much the same meaning. Um, so, tendere, in fact, our word tent, tent is just cloth that has been stretched out to make a covering. It's from the same root, tan, to stretch. Um, our word tenuous, the Latin tenuous, means something that's been stretched out. So it's a bit thin, a tenuous argument, yeah, a bit, a bit thin. And, there's a lovely one, our own word thin comes from that same root, tan. It's thin. Why? Because it's been stretched, not all thick and compact. It's thin because it's been stretched out, stretched thin. Tanneries, is it the same? Because uh, you stretch the tanneries. You stretch the what's? The, the skins of animals, yeah, in order to process them. One of the operations is actually... Oh, stretching. the, the tannery, of course. It's highly likely. I'll look that up. I th would say it's very likely. Thank you. Very nice one, that. Uh, thanks, Mariano. So now a tantra... So a loom on which you stretch wool for weaving is a tantra. We've got, as in, for example, a man, man, mind or thinking, and a mantra. Mantra is literally a mind tool, something that you know you operates on, on, on the mind. So a tantra, um, just means a loom because it's the tantra, the, the stretching device on which you stretch out the your um, your wool for weaving. It also is a word meaning controlling or governing tantra, and so if a country is swatantra, it is independent, self-rule. So when the and India was you know, striving for, for independence and self-rule. It was striving for its uh, swatantrata. So we've actually got through, I've only got, I've only taken my, um, I better get busy with some more YouTubes and editing because I've, I've only got up as, thus far now to 11. So do we have any questions arising? So let me call this up again. I'm just going to say, I, uh, thought, I'd, I thought I'd printed everything off up and I could only get up to 10. I'm not sure I've got 11 available. Ah. Um, Is anyone else short of 11? Yeah, I'm short of 11. Ah, goodness me. No. Ooh, ooh. Um, <laughs> oops. I wonder if I have failed to, I'm just trying to get my. Uh -oh, uh oh. So that's the other one. Verbus Simpson. Eh, do you know what I've done? I have, I think I have. Yes. Oh, goodness me. Mera bada pap, my great pap. Mera bada pap, eh? Thank you for pointing that out. I have actually done it, but I clearly have failed to. Yeah, I know I've done it because you've just been looking at it. Sorry. And I've realized now, you see, what you're just looking at on screen is the Word document on my own hard drive that I was showing you. I had failed to um, put that into PDF and, uh, and upload it. So my apologies for that. I will do it forthwith. 
Um, sorry, not forthwith, because I'm moving straight into the parlay class, but I will do it um, this afternoon. So you'll have at least number um, 11 and possibly 12 as, as well up on the on my Google Drive um, by about half past four or five this, this afternoon. My apologies for that, and thank you for point, pointing it out. <laughs> thank you, James. That okay, right then, Desmond. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Yes. Oh, Desmond, did, did you by any chance want to wind it up by, by reciting that verse to us? <laughs> no, no, I better not. I better not try. <laughs> Who is going to wind up by reciting verse 11 to us? Don't all volunteer at once. <laughs> all screens them. <laughs> well, have a go. Shall I? Jiva Matsya Ivasmiti Yuktam Bayam Ihavate Kim Kutha Pasya Tibran Naraka Duktaya. Well, that wasn't that wasn't too bad at all. Do you feel better now, Desmond? I do. Taking the taking the plunge. Excellent. Hopefully, you will encourage others as well. Yes. yes. <laughs> Great. Thank, Thank you for volunteering, Desmond. Well done. <laughs> No, no, thank you very much, James. It's uh, okay. Thank the, you all. The whole thing is very enlightening and helpful in every way. Thank you, thank you, James. I think we're um, we're probably over the worst of the the squeamish making ones now. Um, I mean, it's not all lovey dovey from here on, but uh, we're probably we we've probably seen seen the nasty of it now, nastiest of it now. I think so. Yeah, okay, yes. He now he now goes into kind of caustic sarcasm about poor you poor little you poor delicate little creatures. Okay, that that that's for next time. <laughs> okay, thank you all. Thank, thank you, you for thank, thank you for joining. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.